Hello and welcome to PlayStation Grenade. This week, I've been attempting to find the perfect sensitivity to endorse for people playing Fortnite Battle Royale. I've tried using Sense 1 1 all the way up to 10 10, but I now know for certain it's impossible to say one way of playing is superior to another. So instead, I've put together this guide to help you find your ideal settings. Please share your sensitivity in the comments below and upvote those you agree with. Let's see what the general consensus is here. We'll look at a handful of pro players on console, then we'll break down a bit of the science and look for some tips and tricks to help you make your final decision. But first, let's quickly make sure we're all on the same page with the definition of sensitivity on console. This is completely about how much movement and pressure we apply to our thumbs whilst gaming. This is always split into two axes, the X and Y. If you're having a hard time remembering which is which, a great way to remember is by using your head. Literally. Nod your head like you're saying yes, that's the Y axis. So the first letter of yes is Y. Get the idea? When you were last at school, you may have gotten an answer wrong, and to symbolise that, the teacher would write an X or a cross, and they'd probably shake their head at you too. Use that to remember the X axis. Generally, there are two trains of thought in Fortnite. High sensitivity will give you the edge in build battles and close-up combat. Low sensitivity will see you control medium to long range encounters. Our plan today is to find your settings to be able to keep a foot in both camps. So let's crack on. Let's look at the sensitivity of a few pro gamers and YouTubers to get a grasp of the key differences in playstyle. Probably the most well-known PS4 player is Nick Merckx, who is so good he can beat professional PC players using mouse and keyboard. Nick uses a mid-sense setting with 6 for both X and Y axis. He formerly used default 5-5 X and Y settings, but like most people, over time his style developed. He's well aware that he's not the greatest build battler in the lobby, and openly admits that his edit game isn't anywhere near PC players, but what he gives away in building style, he makes up for with accuracy, which is second to none. His playstyle is offense and quick kills, favoring attack shotgun over a pump. He also uses a pro controller to jump using his left middle finger, therefore his right thumb never leaves the stick. When aiming down sights or using a scope, his sensitivity is 0.5, but I've seen him use other ones in the past. Half the sensitivity on offer is the main point here. This aim sensitivity is set up for mid to long range encounters, perfect to complement his shotgun game. From all this information, we can assume that Nick is heavier handed than most players and uses large thumb movements to achieve an extraordinarily high level of play. Yeah! Oh my god, thank you! Another world class console player who recently destroyed a PC server with 32 kills using a controller is Upshot. This beast of a player doesn't use the right thumbsticks to crouch, instead he's a little more old school and utilises the claw technique. In terms of settings, Upshaw uses 6-6 six, six sensitivity just like Nick Merckx, but his aiming down the sight stays higher at 0.65, meaning again his building isn't his priority, those kills are. The 0.65 aiming sensitivity allows for perfection at medium range with only marginal drop off at long distances. He has another trick up his sleeve for long range encounters, utilising the aim assist, but we'll get to that soon, I promise. On the flip side of those players who want high kill, high tempo games is Alex Raimi Gaming, best known for having a record number of solo wins on console. Alex utilises max sensitivity of 10-10, meaning the smallest movements in his thumbs are recognised as large movements by the console. I know it can sometimes look like he's using a Zim controller and a mouse and keyboard, but I've seen enough evidence to believe him that he's on a controller. Alex plays for wins rather than kills, so he keeps out of danger until the final circle, where his build speed keeps him on top. That 10-10 sensitivity is all about getting the high ground. His ADS and scope sights are running at 0.65 and 0.65, making him accurate at all distances, especially medium range. And of course, he can jump around with a shotgun with the best of them. And let's check out the king of clickbait himself, Ali A. <laughs> That's enough of that. Surprisingly, Ali plays at default 5-5 settings, giving him an advantage at range. 
A little more surprisingly though, his ADS and scope sensitivities are 0.6 and 0.7, making them quicker than you'd expect. From watching his gameplay, he appears to regularly change his settings, which makes sense for a player who plays other games as well as Fortnite. Yes, it's possible to play more than one game. As a quick note, Ali is another one of those who use a pro controller to keep the edge when in bunny hop battles. You know what, I'll include myself on this list to keep the skill level decreasing. <laughs> I, I favour an 8-7 sensitivity with ADS around 0.55 and scope around 6. Mine are a little funky, so let me break them down. It may sound strange having disproportionate X and Y axis, but in my previous life, I used to look at video game development. And over the years, I've had a small insight into thumbstick acceleration. Let's break it down. Look at your thumb. Which is the easier motion for you? Moving it left to right on the X axis or up and down on the Y axis? Hopefully you said left and right is easier. And that's because a huge portion of your hand is dedicated towards supporting that motion. Whereas the up down motion is a little harder to control due to the muscles used. Since thumbsticks were introduced, the Y axis, the up and down one, was accelerated to feel closer to the X axis. So before we even choose our own sensitivity, always be mindful that it's highly likely the up down motion is already a point or two higher than the X axis. I don't want to go too far with that, so I hope that makes sense. Let me know if I need to break it down anymore. Anyway, let's move on before things become too technical. Here's the question. So how the heck do we figure out which sensitivity we should use? Well, there are a few drills we can try out in playground mode, or if that's down, pick a game mode and fly to the edge of the map for some alone time. The first drill is designed to test your x-axis movement. Find a tree, a lamppost, a telegraph pole, and aim your reticle at it. But don't aim down the sights. We'll get to that, I promise. For now, move to your right and attempt to keep the cursor in the middle of that object. Count how many times it drops out in around five seconds. Now go back the other way and count the mistakes. Try this at different distances. If there is no chance that you can keep control, now's a great time to try other sensitivities. Once you're settled and happy, try the whole thing with more pace. In fact, change up your movement to truly test yourself. If you're happy, now we can introduce the up-down motion into the mix, which will test your Y-axis skills on top of your X. It's not easy, is it? Don't worry though, we aren't looking for perfection, just control, so stay around the target if possible. So now we'll bring in hip fire and a little building. Generally, it's accepted that higher sensitivity is needed for building, but that also reduces quick fire accuracy with weapons. So we want our sensitivity to be as high as possible without losing confidence in our shot. Now we're going to build up a little before taking shots for added muscle memory training. Attempt to jump from a ramp and aim with your shotgun to destroy items in the world. When I say aim, I'm referring to hip fire when in close combat. I personally like the motel at the north of the map as it has these parasols to practice with. If you're using a standard controller, this drill will test your ability to jump and then return your thumb to the stick to fire with accuracy. If you play claw or use a pro controller, still give this a go and try to count how many shots you land in a row. So now we're getting a feel for our sensitivity. At any point you want to switch up the sensitivity, but keep in mind whatever you settle on will take time to learn and will probably change in the future. Here's a crucial point. Make sure you are aiming both left and right. It's important, as you'll see which is your dominant side. It's like handwriting, right or left, one always feels more comfortable. Learn which is your favoured position and plan better in battle. Try the whole thing with different weapons, such as a spam weapon like a drum gun. Another thing to note here is that the aim function is set to favour right-sided players. Here's an example. Here I can aim off the right-hand side of my ramp, but if I try this on the left, it's simply impossible. So always keep that in mind. Your strength is your right-hand side. So at this point, we can aim and move. We can build and fire from the high ground. We can jump and flick shot with the best of them. But at this point, we're still shooting inanimate objects. Now's the time to figure out our ADS setting. Sadly, we can't do this alone as aim assist plays a huge part in aiming on console. Let's quickly outline aim assist or aim resist, as many people call it. Without a doubt, we need aim assist on console. It basically acts like a stabilizer once you're aimed in and start shooting. If you are going up against a keyboard and mouse player, aim assist is the single advantage a console player has. And keep in mind, everyone in the server has it switched on, so you may as well utilize it too. 
The reason why I call it aim resist is due to the issue we looked at a few months back. If you start shooting just behind an opponent, the aim assist kicks in and actively prevents you from catching back up with your enemy and completely dents your confidence. The aim assist has been tweaked and updated many times in the last 6 months, making it now possible to reacquire your target by disengaging for a split second, taking your finger off both the aim and fire triggers, then a millisecond later reapplying them. Instantly, your target should be back in your sights. Going back to Upshaw, his trick is to almost spam the aim trigger for ultra quick target acquisition. He also takes single shots with ARs to maximize first shot accuracy, crouch accuracy and aim assist all in one. He's got so good at it, he's been accused of using aimbot. Just look at these skills. So back to aiming down sights and sensitivity. I'm sure you've already noticed the aim assist randomly kicks in when someone jumps past you in the lobby. The reticle almost follows the target for a split second. This is the key to finding your aim sensitivity. For drills, you'll want to invite friends into playground mode, or I prefer to get behind the enemy in a 50 vs 50 match to practice aiming and following a target. Are you able to keep your reticle on a running enemy? Or a running and jumping enemy? Or a building enemy? Like always, try different distances. But here's the kicker, just before you shoot, release and re-engage the aim trigger to add a smidgen more accuracy to your shot. Pretty cool isn't it? It definitely works, it just takes a bit of time to practice. It's pretty cool when it does work. <laughs> right, let's look at other ways to get the edge in a fight, with a few tips and tricks to consider. Aim assist is godly, but there are other ways to find an advantage. Going back to Ali A, he uses button remapping to change the aim and fire triggers, from the typical R2 and L2, bringing them forward to R1 and L1. This theory is pretty damn simple, the amount of time your finger takes to push the trigger down is considerably longer than using a button. You can literally shoot faster by switching the trigger to the button in front. Similarly, many players change R3 to jump to allow them to aim whilst jumping in the air. As we saw earlier, jumping and aiming on a standard controller is nigh on impossible unless you use a pro controller or use the fabled claw technique. Speaking of pro controllers, I've recently reviewed a scuff impact to see how it gives an advantage in Fortnite. It's worth a watch if you want to see what all the hullabaloo is about. <laughs> There's also a small advantage to be had by turning off vibration, as it can impair your hands for a split second, especially if you use high sensitivity. We're starting to move away from the term sensitivity now, so I'll bring the video to an end. Hopefully this has given you an insight into your perfect settings on console. Please keep in mind it can take up to 600 hours for muscle memory to be perfected, so don't give up after an hour or two. Keep tweaking your inputs over days, weeks and months until you're completely happy with your decision. And always remember, playstyle will dictate your sensitivity. Are you a master builder or a shotgun bunny? Are you a mid-range battler or a sniper? Do you rush or do you play slow? There's so many ways to approach Fortnite and to approach console sensitivity. Ooh, we did it. Thank you for your time. I'm Adam from PlayStation Grenade. I hope that's helped. I'll catch you next time. See ya.